Ellis James and John Robbins. Radio X. That was X's and O's, Ellie King's tribute to her two favourite letters of the alphabet. This is Radio X. I am John Robbins. And to my left is the great bard of Carmarthen, Irving's heir, speaking truth to power and giving power to the truth, Mr. Ellis James, celebrated actor. Oh, Ellis, <laughs> treading the boards. Good. The notices, the notices. <laughs> Kill for a seat. Kill for a ticket. Mr. Ellis James. Good morning, John. How are you doing? <laughs> Great. <laughs> That's not really the kind of acting I do. He is the pride of Shaftesbury <laughs> Avenue. <laughs> Acclaim, awards, awards, I dare say. This talk of awards, Mr. Ellis no, Jones. Oh, they mean nothing to me, John. The only award I need is the gratitude of the great British public. <laughs> and money. And money, yes. I like to be remunerated, John. I do, I do, I do. Well done for saying remunerated, not remunerated. Yeah, thank you. Yeah, I was quite chuffed for that. Basically, uh, I got it wrong a couple of times and, uh, you know, people have corrected me in the past. It's the correct vocabulary of someone very familiar with m- 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 <laughs> oh, sin. sin. That would have been funny. Did you just say sin? Yes. <laughs> that would have been very funny if you'd got it right, but never mind. Now, listeners, Ellis James is the star the star of a major national television situation comedy. It's called Josh, in reference to one of the minor parts. (laughs) (laughs) And already the press have singled Ellis out for praise. Some some publications saying he's the best thing in it. Well, you know, I, I, I don't agree with that. All in, oh, one one for all and all for one. You know, I think we are we're all we're all playing. Why are you crossing your fingers? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Ellis James is playing uh, a part in a sitcom. The sitcom's called Josh, and it's on BBC Three at half past ten. Uh, I have now watched uh, the said episode um, because we met yesterday, and it was clear that the fact that I hadn't watched it was was problematic. <laughs> so, well, everyone else had. I sort of, I mean, I, I had to watch it. Yeah. yeah. And um, uh, Ellis plays uh, a, a sort of a ladies' man. Mm, yeah. A Lothario. Someone <laughs> successful is, uh... with the girl, someone yes. experienced in the sexual arts and kissing. And I'd like to point out that I received no financial compensation as uh, the key influence <laughs> on this role because Ellis James is someone I know for a fact who has only had sex once and it resulted in the birth of his child. <laughs> And since then, he has uh, committed himself to a vow of chastis- chastity and broadcasting. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, Ellis... Basically, I'm in a relationship with commercial indie rock radio. So, like uh, a method actor, over the past ten years of our relationship, have you just been monitoring me, picking up on my tics, yes. my, my verbal traits, in order to then represent me on a sitcom? Basically, it was just fascinating to be able to watch someone with that level of charm up, up close, close quarters, getting to see how you work. Work, getting to see how you sort of rein w- women in, you make them feel important. You're like Daniel Day Lewis when he worked as a cobbler for six months in yeah, yeah. Italy, or when uh, Robert De Niro actually worked as a taxi driver before doing taxi driving. Yeah. I just hang out with my charming friend John, and as a consequence, I think it's an excellent display of superb acting. Uh, I have you watched it, Producer D? I have. Producer V? I have. Yeah. Um, how many times did you laugh, Producer Dave? Oh, uh, p- let's not do this. No, it's all... G- I, I laughed 11 times. <laughs> <You counted. laughs> Which, uh, praise if praise be need be, is just shy of what I... the amount of times I usually laugh with 28 minutes of my own thoughts. <laughs> so, I mean, that's amazing. Because so no it, other it, it's comedy... As, it's as funny as you're in a monologue. It's almost as funny, almost as, funny as, as any it. random 28 minutes in my own mind. I would. What I'd give to enter your mind for 28 minutes. Um, I, I mean, I've sort of... Wipe your feet <laughs> before you come in. <laughs> Bring a bottle. <laughs> and, uh, you know, book a taxi for about 2am. <laughs> you know, I've sort of... I've been on the outskirts of Expect your mind. Expect the unexpected. <laughs> If you hear a noise in the attic, <laughs> don't ask what it is. And, uh, you know, just ha- hang out there. Um, one, one small uh, 
uh, one small problem with the... Oh, yeah. Well, two, no, two problems. Right. Both came to mind in, in sort of the final scene, the climactic scene. Yeah. Uh, there's a pool party. Is I don't think that's not a spoiler. No. Alert. And in the pool party, Alice, I would say there were 20 extras. Yes. So basically it was their job to be in a pool party, drink booze, snog girls. Yes. Um, and they were strangers. They were just well, they were just yes, together. That's that's uh, something I'd like to raise. <laughs> that in a group of twenty extras, <laughs> who's who were being paid to to drink and snog girls, I didn't receive a call. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but you you look like someone who goes to a book party, not a pool party. <laughs> L well, this brings me on to my second point yeah, right. because at the pool party, uh, you make uh, make make light of, and I quote, a weirdo drinking real ale. <laughs> I, I, yes. So at the pool party, <laughs> where there are twenty people, none of whom are known to you, yeah, who are being paid to 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 drink snog girls basically have a party, and they need one of them specifically with expertise in the drinking of real ale. At no point, yeah. at no point in your mind, which I can only imagine is some kind of cavern of selfishness, <laughs> yes, did you ever think, oh, we could get John to do that? He's yeah. free, I guess. Sorry, I think that might have been an ad lib on the day. An ad lib on the day? Yeah, sorry. <laughs> sorry about that. So, and you didn't think to reshoot it? Bring no. me in for a bit of gravitas. Um, unfortunately, not. And and you you do look more like someone who's going to go to a whist drive. Well, this <laughs> person is off stay. He's not in shot. I could have just been there in the corner drinking real ale, to, for you to sort of as your See what cue. They did? Uh, a sort of um, in, inside knowledge on how a sitcom is filmed. When we looked at the person who was drinking real ale, it was just a bit of gaffer tape stuck to a wall. So you would rather give an opportunity <laughs> to a bit of gaffer tape. <laughs> than to your best friend, who's responsible for the inspiration of your character, and you know full well is regularly free on weekdays <laughs> and sometimes <laughs> at weekends. This is Ian Brown with F-E-A-R. You know the alphabet, you do the rest. <laughs> Ellis James and John Robbins. Radio X. Coffee and TV there by Blur. Uh, you're listening to Radio X. I am John Robbins, and to my left is superstar Mr. Ellis James. Ellis, we've had a lot of uh, correspondence about your thighs, <laughs> as seen in all their glory on the sitcom Josh. Yeah. I got a lot of tweets about this. Will you be wearing shirt shorts in other episodes? Oof, fancy Ellis James, hashtag those legs. Yeah, well, you know. My, my girlfriend did a gig with you and said you wouldn't stop going on about how many people had mentioned your thighs. Yes, all right. I'm, uh, yeah, it's a very happy byproduct of the sitcom I'm in. <laughs> a thigh product. A th it's a happy <laughs> thigh product. Um, you know, I've, I've known about my legs for years, but now it's good that they're sort of, they've been exposed to the British wider public. <laughs> because they've sort of mistaken your um, uh, genetic issue, Welshman's thigh, yeah. with some kind of sort of intentional yeah. Yeah, yeah. workout people, regime. People think I've been, you know, sort of pushing myself at the gym, whereas in reality, if you're from Wales, that's It's just because happen. five generations before you worked in mines. Exactly, so I've just got these th thighs that, can I use this word? They're made of steel. Mm. <laughs> but to put... My ability to cycle for long distances is, is, I mean, why I didn't go into Tour de France cycling, I've got no idea. I've gone into commercial radio and comedy. <laughs> to put myself in a lady's position for the first time, may I say, <laughs> I, I don't know that the thigh would be the, the element of a man's body that would sort of really get me... I agree, get but... chills down the old... I agree, but when it's the only thing you've got going for you, you really try and make the most of it. Okay. Are you a thigh man, Dave? Um, I'm not, but I, I'm aware that girls do like a good leg. I've heard in the past, oh, he's got lovely legs. But so, legs, I, okay, legs, but thighs. Well, that's I mean, half to, of the leg. Yeah, I mean, it's 50%. <laughs> a specific leg muscle, I'm not sure that Yeah, they... but also the calves aren't bad either. Yeah. I mean... People like, have mentioned you know, the calves as well. They look like chicken fillets. Yeah, that stuff to me is not a good thing. R wrapped in human skin. Well, exactly. Again, what? So sort of like a mad and pig in a blanket. In, and covered in hair. <laughs> like sort of Hannibal Lecter's Christmas trimmings. <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah, I suppose. But, you know, in socks. Yeah. <laughs> So it doesn't really transfer in the metaphor of Christmas <laughs> no, no. trimmings. No, no, no. You, you you don't eat Sunday dinner that's been um, prepared in a sock. That said, uh, I have drunk a can of beer out of a sock on a booze cruise in Tenerife in 1999. Great days. Then I fell asleep and sort of it became I became a focus point of ridicule. <laughs> um, of those things. Listeners, if anyone, what's that noise, Dave? That's not me. Sorry, it's my phone. My phone's gone mad. Anyway, ca- carry on. Um... If any listeners want to set up a Twitter account for Ellis's thighs, <laughs> that would be exceptional. And you could tweet from the thighs during episodes of Josh, as if to say, big scene coming up, everyone. <laughs> Just uh, taking Ellis from the bedroom to the living room. Yeah, you could... Uh, Hi, Jack D. I think this has John Robbins written all over it, to yeah. be honest. Yeah, I reckon. Yeah. Yeah, I really, really got to say this. Big thanks to the work done by my compadre, the hamstring. <laughs> <laughs> Can you set up more than one Twitter account? I'm sure you can. Yeah, yeah. I've got a couple. <laughs> ah! Have you? Are you that girl that keeps adding me and I can't work out why? And it's just pictures of her bum. Um, no, it's, that's not true, no. Um, it's, it was for something we did for a previous show, so... This sounds bad, Div. I yeah. mean, it, this sounds... A man with multiple Twitter accounts. It <laughs> it's a long sound, story, it doesn't matter, it's you fine. You sound creepy. What are the names of them? Uh, Dave Masterman is mine. Yes, that's, um, fi- that's fair enough. And the other one's High Priest 666. <laughs> Don't worry that's about it. That's not true. No way. True. What? What? How is that? Um, because... High Priest 666? <laughs> Sounds ridiculous now. It's well, it sounds ridiculous now. It's for a previous a... show yeah. that uh, I used to produce, and one of the characters was a priest who um, you, was called Vex and the Crowley. Praise? What? Were you trying to subvert no. songs of praise? No. <laughs> we had a feature called Thought for the Day for Satanists. And oh, it, that's not very nice. What was that? Oh, it was very funny. Was it? Uh, yeah. Was, don't well, worry I it. don't think it's very godly of you, Dave. Yeah. Uh, so what was the thought for the day for, for Satanists? It was like thought for the day, but for Satanists. Hmm. Dave. Sorry. How many Another... Facebook accounts have you got, Dave? Seven. How many ba- <laughs> how, have you? No. How many bank accounts have you got? <laughs> how many identities do you have? And how many building society books of vulnerable women have you <laughs> rifled through? You, you like Howard Marks, are Dave. a polygamist. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. I'm going to tell your wife. Look she's into aware. Dave's background. What? So she's aware of the. Of your she's mother. High Priestess 666. <laughs> <laughs> and they run and c- coded adverts in local listings magazines. Uh, anyway, folks, coming up, we've got music from the Red Hot Chili Peppers and the Rolling Stones. You are listening to Ellis James, John Robbins, and High Priest 666 on Radio X. I think it's dormant. It's fine. <laughs> You and Me song by the Wannadies. If you have a song for that special person, let us know what it is, 83936. If uh, you want to die, also text in and we will talk you down from the ledge live on there. I am John Robbins, this is Radio X, and to my left, splice the main brace, batten down the yards, and make way for petty officer Ellis James. Good (laughs) Good morning, John. How are you doing, man? I'm really, really, really great. Uh, why? Just because, um, well, numerous reasons. Okay, uh, one. Uh, there's, uh, well, I- I've had a shower. Okay. <laughs> uh, do Re- they get better? Yes. Okay, two. two. There are two Twitter accounts about my legs. I've seen these. Um, I think, because obviously I wear shorts a lot in Josh, BBC Three, 10.30pm, um, and we talked about this at length last week, about sort of the power of my thighs and the capabilities of my hamstrings, my Spartan calves. Two people have taken it upon themselves to sort of tweet, sort of y- using the personality, the imagined personality of my thighs. And I, I, I've, got, I've got a preferred Twitter account. Oh, which one do you prefer? I like lush legs, <laughs> as opposed to thighs of Ellis. <laughs> so if you do go I on... I feel bad now. If you do tweet... Um, then you can follow at Lush underscore thighs, is it? Uh, Lush underscore legs. Lush underscore legs. And then thighs of Ellis. And at thighs of Ellis. Uh, <laughs> and they will t- tweet you from the perspective of your thighs, yes. isn't it? Yes, yeah, yeah. It's, uh, on, also, it's, it's, it tends to be my thighs rather than my entire leg. I don't know why that is. Yeah. Because I, it's, it's, I think the headline grabbers are my calves. 
Right. Um, so this is because Ellis is uh, starring in BBC Three sitcom Josh, um, which airs on a Wednesday at yep, half past Wednesday, ten. 10. Episode two went out this week, and I watched the episode because I'm kind of duty bound to. <laughs> uh, I'm not really the core demographic, um, and it features Ellis trying to win the. Uh, sexual affections of an <laughs> older lady played by Ms. Jennifer Saunders. And Ellis, I have to ask you this question because I'm not on good enough terms with Aid Edmondson, but what is it like to dry hump Jennifer <laughs> Saunders? I never thought over I'd be a, asking you that. Over a pool table. Over a pool table, with she, her consent. With her consent, absolutely. She is. She was V-chilled about the whole thing. Mm -hmm. We had a laugh about it. She would, she would, she would just lie there and and wait for them to shout action and then at which point I would get involved because I didn't want to lie there on top of her if I didn't need to because obviously I didn't know her very well. And obviously you know, here's the elephant in the room. What <laughs> yes. happens if acting <laughs> becomes <laughs> method acting and your, shall we say pull cue <laughs> begins to uh, assemble Prepare itself. Prepare to take a shot. <laughs> mm. Was that an issue? Um, because it's difficult, because if it wasn't an issue, she could may well take that as a, yes. as a slight. I don't want to discuss whether it's an issue or not, but I would... I, 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 <laughs> you're able to take breaks by claiming that you have a headache. <laughs> right. So I would say, oh, I've got another one of my two minutes. <laughs> and then I would, I would. Did, did you actually do that? No, maybe that's that's what I would have done. I, right. I'd, li I'd like it to remain ambiguous, please. <laughs> no, I want behind the scenes goss. Well, I'll give you behind the scenes goss during a track, but do bear in mind we're broadcasting live to the nation. She could be listening, John. I very much doubt Jennifer Saunders <laughs> listens to Radio X, and even so, I'm sure she would be pleased to hear some bes yes act from also, the actors' studio. Also, you've got to remember that um, when I was sort of lying on top of her on the pool table, she was wearing a very very thick. Geely. Right. So it was more like sort of it was more like hugging a puffer jacket than lying on top of a woman. And it took place in a pub. Yes. Didn't it? So uh, I think we can probably are we right in saying that during the scene you didn't go to the bar and order a semillon? <laughs> would that be would that be nuanced <laughs> enough to yes, suggest? Yes, that would be <laughs> I I had uh, an, an orange juice and lemonade. <laughs> <laughs> what does that mean in this context? <laughs> well, Ellis, I'm about to p pick your bones okay. with you. Good. I, as have the majority of the population, been fo following the, I think we can say, runaway success of sitcom Josh. Oh, thank you. In which you play uh, a lead role. Yeah. And I'm guessing had rather a large say in some of the casting decisions. Yes. <laughs> um, yes. I mean, and you're not in it, yes. I've been following uh, with great glee. Uh, and also, uh, it's on Wednesdays, 10.30, BBC Three. That's right. I've been interested to see an awful lot of uh, cameos made by comedians, <laughs> stand-up comedians who are mutual friends of you and Josh. So it's quite a sort of, sort of medium-sized Venn diagram. Yeah. Uh, the week before last's show uh, featured Mike Wozniak. Yeah. Felicity Ward. Celia Pacola. Celia Pacola. We, we all know this. Really. All people yeah. that we would probably share a drink with in Edinburgh. Absolutely. This week's featured uh, the wonderful Mr. James A. Caster. Yeah, you've got the same agent as him, yeah. Yeah, the same <laughs> agent. So, awful <laughs> lot of sort of, um, you know, all under one happy umbrella. Yes. All just hanging out, sort of reaping the rewards of our hard work over the... Oh, I say our, <laughs> because I, I don't remember... Film. I don't remember getting an email during the filming process. I would say that your talents are too potent to be constrained by television. Hmm. So I think... I mean, I agree. <laughs> but I'm not sure I, that I, you're being completely genuine there. So I think that I think that radio is absolutely the perfect medium for you. It lets you cut loose. It lets you sort of, st you know, stretch your wings a little bit. It lets you get out there. Or... Yeah. If there were to be a second series of uh, Runaway Success sitcom Josh, yes. Wednesdays 10.30, BBC Three. Yeah, watching how, the iPlayer as well, all comes. How, how about a new flatmate arrives right. upstairs. Okay. He's 
Very good. He's a, mis he's a mysterious character. He's handsome and yet... <laughs> Ill-looking. <laughs> <laughs> no! No! He's handsome, yet um, <laughs> a mysterious <laughs> and <laughs> sensitive. That's right. But hard to, hard to quite put your finger on something. He's, he's troubled, but like in a really cool way. Well, what's his favourite drink, John? Uh, uh, he's troubled well, in a cool way. Yeah, yeah he's troubled in a cool, in a cool way. way. And he, uh, th there's lots of uh, empty rum bottles in his house. Yeah. And does he drive a Skoda Fabia? He maybe could drive a 2004 Skoda Fabia Did with damage caused by a, 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 a recovery vehicle oh. that refused to give him their insurance details oh. and said they'd pay £80 and then didn't return his calls. Right, okay, that could be episode one. Well, this is... <laughs> I've got maybe, so much go background to, to this character. Did he maybe go to a tabletop in Comprehensive in the Thornbury area? Yes, but it was a Comprehensive. Yes. So how about he moves in upstairs <laughs> yeah. and is in the... Sitcom. And we hear his hangover shames through the <laughs> through the ceiling. Yeah, but also his singing in the shower. Which, and uh, what sort of music would he like? Uh, Queen. Of course, but Maybe. who doesn't? Or other big stadium rock bands. Like who? Uh, Guns N' Roses. Oh, God. But I'd use Queen as the, as the sort of <laughs> inspiration for my role. Right, okay. Even though I'd have to sort of say it was Axl Rose. So, moustache, vest, yeah. yellow leather jacket. So, how could you, would, how would they, when... Let, that happen? let me, if it goes to a second series, let me talk to the execs. Let me talk to yeah. the big docs. Docs. <laughs> let me talk to the big docs <laughs> about a shipyard episode. Um, <laughs> well, and he could maybe, he could be sort of a, a recurring character. Maybe there's a mystery in his flat they want to solve. The mystery Bad of the... smell, maybe. No. <laughs> a, a good smell. Hey, what a lovely idea. There's this, a beautiful smell coming from his flat and they think he's maybe making a new kind of potion, but it turns out to be his particular brand of electronic cigarette juice. Okay, well listen, I'll, I'll pop something in your pigeon. I, I would provide the juice. Okay. <laughs> so that's already a cost saving. So the, the licence fee payer doesn't have to worry about that. King of the Rodeo by Kings of Leon. I believe that's uh, new from them, is it Dave? No. no. <laughs> Every so often just think I'd like to have a guess. So, it's really old. Is it? Yeah. Oh, well really done. old. Because it sounds as fresh as the day it was born. <laughs> now, uh, listeners, everyone, I'm sure, will have been following Ellis's Rise to Stardom on hit BBC3 sitcom Josh. Uh, I don't know if you're listening last week, but it certainly racked up quite a few cameos from various comedian friends of Ellis's and Josh's. This week's I watched with interest, um, and uh, Mr. Ramesh Ranganathan yep. featured the excellent performance there. And I was uh, sort of before I was a bit um, a bit hurt, thinking uh, why didn't I guess? But I've, I've cracked the code now. What's happening is they're building to the Robins debut season two. Yeah, and ten. someone <laughs> has uh, emailed in, <laughs> amazingly, a script treatment yeah. for an episode of the sitcom which I feature in. Uh, right. I mean, obviously not the first. I mean, that's probably been knocking around the BBC for some time, centuries. But uh, the, the I think Lord Reith wrote it in it originally. <laughs> but it's it's so in depth. We're actually going to have to sort of prepare it to broadcast next week. To coincide with the... Is it the sixth? Is it the final episode? Final season? episode next final week. Final episode yeah, next week. Night. So w w we'll premiere that. It's uh, sent in by Mika uh, Kataja or Kataya. Uh, we thank you for that. I mean, the major irony here is, though, I had also prepared <laughs> a draft <laughs> synopsis for an episode in which I feature... Uh, so Ellis, a lot of no a lot of ideas are beginning to circulate. Right, okay. It's basically fan fiction. Um, <laughs> I wonder. I, I don't think they'll be able to resist for long. But so we're going to start this week with my. This right. is my pitch. Okay. For Josh season so two. So listeners to the show are writing these now. As well, well the as general public. The general. I think there's an e petition. Clamour is the word. I think you need to. They're going to have to debate it in Parliament. <laughs> if it gets any more signatures. Right, yeah. That hundred thousand petition um, petition signatures. So guys, you can check out Josh at half past ten on uh, BBC Three on Wednesday. But uh, let's see if this this plot synopsis wets your whistle for series two. Okay. Josh, season two, episode one: the mystery of the Queen Shilling. 
Josh, Owen and Kate are sat hung over following a big party. Jeff arrives to say he has let the flat above to a mysterious yet handsome stranger. <laughs> After he leaves, they, catch a, they hide to catch a glimpse of the new neighbour, but he has entered the flat in secrecy. The next few days, they try to find clues out about him. His recycling is made up of empty rum bottles, Diet Coke cans and draft poetry. <laughs> they rifle through his bins. Owen rightly observes that the discarded poetry is of such a high standard that the stuff he kept must be world class <laughs> and deduces that he attended one of the great universities. <laughs> One evening, they see Brian May walking up the stairs to the flat above. The next day, Roger Taylor arrives, closely followed by a dignified bass player. <laughs> Late that night, there is a knock on the door. Josh runs to wake up the others. It's him! It's him! And they all rush to the door. On opening it, we meet John. He is tall and really cool. Kate immediately falls into a swoon. His playing age is early 20s, even younger than the rest of the cast, amazingly. It turns out... He is a detective just like Sherlock Holmes and needs their Wi-Fi code as his internet is down. Josh refuses, but then John does some hacking on his handset and gets the code anyway. He is solving the mystery of Freddie Mercury's lost shilling. A rare coin worth tens of thousands of pounds. The rest of the band meet him regularly to give him clues while he smokes his electronic pipe. He tracks down the shilling to a disreputable coin dealer and Josh goes in disguise to buy it. He solves the mystery and remains friends with Queen and is in in the next episode too. <laughs> John, how do you think the rest of the world sees you? Um, as a cool Queen-based modern Sherlock Holmes. <laughs> Do you think if I sent that to the who would I who do I need to send that well, to? Well, text it. Uh, you could email. Text it. <laughs> yeah, you could email it to sign with the producer. Maybe. So yeah. could, will you give me? Yeah, I'll give you his email address. And yeah. well, then what will then what happens? Uh, I, well, obviously, you know, no one can really predict the internal machinations of the BBC, mm. can they? You know, so obviously. So what it might be? It might be episode two, because yeah. I'd quite like it to be the debut. Yeah, or it might be a spin-off series. Really? Yeah. Like Joey? Cool. Yeah, just call it John. <laughs> is there going to be a is there going to be a spin-off series called Ellis's Thighs? Yeah. Owen's oh. Thighs. Yeah, Owen's Thighs. Uh, a new Twitter account now for my legs. Uh, Ellis's Calves. Ellis's That's Calves. Three Twitter accounts about my legs. That makes me feel nice. So what? What? Percentage? Leave it with me, mate. Could we get that in writing? Yeah, leave it with me, and I will do what I can. Do you want me to forward? Because it's quite good as a mystery, isn't it? It is. Yeah, I'm certainly. I mean, uh, and and Brian May and Roger Taylor make a cameo. Uh, yeah, I mean that would be very positive for maybe our Eastern European listeners. <laughs> <laughs> if you got Deacon on, Queen that would be massive news. You would pick up millions of yeah. South American and yes. Eastern European listeners. <laughs> Yes. Anyway, folks, do check out Josh at half past nine on BBC Three to see half past ten. Half past ten, sorry, on BBC Three to see our little old Ellis treading a ball. And coming up, folks, something we referred to last week: a listener sent in uh, a, a draft script for an episode of hit sitcom Josh, uh, in which I appear. Uh, obviously, because they've now got a second series, so it's inevitable <laughs> that uh, they're going to be looking for ideas of how to get me in the sitcom. Everyone, everyone else has been in it. <laughs> uh, so so stay tuned for that coming up after more great music from Peter Bjorn and Joan. John, <laughs> Joan, I can't see the rest of Peter it. Bjorn I'm not going to show you. I want you to have a guess. <laughs> Peter, basically, John can't see the whole of the artist due to the way that it's laid out on his screen. Peter Bjorn and John McEnroe, <laughs> and it's Bjorn Borg and Peter Sampras, and they formed a super group, yeah. uh, and they mime the guitar on their, on their tennis, tennis rackets. rackets for videos, yeah, is and that it's all session musicians. Is that true? Peter, Sampras, Bjorn and John. Yeah, <laughs> McEnroe, Borg and Sampras with young folks uh, <laughs> and Radiohead and lots of other great stuff. X. Ellis James and John Robbins. Radio X. Now, Ellis James... The season finale of a hit BBC Three sitcom, Josh, uh, aired this Wednesday to uh, high praise and very high viewing figures. Mm. And the <laughs> the sort of uh, cavalcade of cameos has uh, 
continued, hasn't it? It's a torrent, it? isn't it? I mean, the Venn diagram of uh, stand-up comedians that you and Josh both know has now added a new circle because there was a cameo from Radio X's producer Neil. Yes, <laughs> producer Neil makes an appearance in the party scene. So now we're looking at people that you and Josh know yeah. who are stand-up comedians who are connected in some way to Radio X. I don't know if you notice him in the background, but the uh, Jamie, the landlord of the Hillgrove pub, your old local, I mean, he's in the party as well. If I'd... that was true, I'd have hunted <laughs> you down. <laughs> so... I am the only person left in that Venn diagram. Do you understand? You, yes. Do you do understand yes. that? Don't you? I, 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 I see the sort of the mental pickle you're in. And so, as uh, it's been announced that season two of Josh is to go ahead, we're getting uh, a lot of correspondence, a lot of uh, public furor. Uh, yeah. A lot of campaigning. There's a change.org. P- there is. <laughs> for, if, if, if it gets 100,000 signatures, they'll have to discuss it in Parliament. <laughs> yes, which I can't wait for. <laughs> uh, lots of here, here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, it'd be, it'd, be, it'd be a cross-party issue. Yeah, it would be. <laughs> so, um, we've had uh, an email from Mika Kataja. I hope I'm saying that right, Mika. Um, and they have emailed us a script for the uh, inevitable episode where I make my cameo in Josh as the only person left in the Venn diagram. Yeah. Uh, and we're going to now uh, sort of do a, a, what they would call um, a table read. <laughs> <laughs> uh, this is what often happens with uh, sitcoms and new scripts. They're just, everyone sits around a table. Yeah, in front of the execs. Now, because of Mika's devotion to the course, we have had to edit this down because <laughs> it was almost a full episode. Yeah. But I think it makes for fascinating reading. And um, it we're really all shows the potential of a Robin's cameo, I think. Yes. Uh, I'm going to play Josh and me. Uh, Ellis is going to play Ellis. Vin is going to play Kate. <laughs> and director Dave is going to be the narrator. So, uh, execs of the BBC, David Schneider, Josh, <laughs> listen up, because this is how we hit the big time. Scene one. <laughs> Josh enters the flat. Kate is on the sofa checking her phone. Owen appears from the kitchen. Josh comes to stand next to the sofa, initially silent. That new neighbour. <laughs> what? No shirt on. Jeans, shoes, leather jacket, no shirt. Really? I tell you, leather jacket and bare chest. And it's December. Don't be daft. You've probably just had a tan shirt on. <laughs> With chest hair on it. Scene two. Owen and Josh are now in the pub. They notice their new neighbour at the back. He is sitting at a table talking to someone with his back at them. Can you see him? He's sitting there with no shirt on. Surely he's got something on, otherwise he'd get thrown over you. I bet you he has no shirt on. How much? Twenty quid. Deal. Money in the bank. Josh and Owen continue waiting, but the neighbour doesn't move. Owen walks to the bar to get a new round in, trying to get a better angle but doesn't succeed. He is sitting at a corner table next to the ladies' toilet. Oh, we need to get a better look. How? I can't go in the ladies' loo. Bring Kate. What about her date? It's bound to be a disaster. He'll be doing her a favour. Josh rings Kate. She picks up immediately. Kate, how's your date going? <laughs> He's getting the drinks in. He talks about cars constantly. He won't stop. Help! Come over. Say it's an emergency. We're at the pub. Emergency, you say? I'll be there in five minutes. <laughs> <laughs> Kate arrives. She looks bewildered. Crankshaft? What is sexy about a crankshaft? And why would I remind anyone about crankshaft? Silence. What did you want? Walk past that guy to the loos and look Look if he's wearing a shirt. Really? You want me here to ogle shirtless men? Just have a look to settle about. Oh, OK. Kate walks past to the loos, turning her head as she walks past the neighbour. He waves at her. She snaps her head back to front, almost colliding with the door. Kate walks back from the loos. <laughs> <laughs> oh, great. Now he thinks I'm coming on to him. But did he have a shirt on? I don't know. His jacket is buttoned up. Well, go and have a second look. I'm not walking past him again. He'll think I'm interested in him. Oh, you've done worse. At least he's not your crankshaft guy. Kate kicks Owen in the shins. Scene three. Josh leans his head in and butts the door softly a couple of times. Door to hallway opens and the neighbour walks in. Jacket's well buttoned up. He stops at Josh's door. Oh, hi. I think we're neighbours. I'm Tom, but you can call me Freddy. <laughs> Hi, uh, I'm Josh. W- why Freddy? It's a nickname. I quite like Queen when I was younger. Right. Silence. Tom looks at a broken key in his hand. I see you've had a little problem. 
Oh, it's nothing. There's a locksmith coming soon. Why don't you wait in my flat? It's nicer than the hallway, at least. <laughs> uh, well, why not? They enter the flat. It's pretty dark inside. He leads Josh to the living room. Josh sits on the edge of the sofa. Want a drink? Oh, what the hell? Why not? Tom walks into the kitchen. It's very dark. Josh tries to find the light switch. I've only got vodka. Is that all right? Sure, uh, whatever. Josh finds a light switch and turns the light on. Every surface <laughs> is plastered with posters of Freddie Mercury. He looks around. There isn't any space between the posters and some are plastered on top of others. From the kitchen, <laughs> In the Lap of the Gods, Revisited starts playing. Is that a song? Yeah, right, it's okay. a great song. <laughs> <laughs> Josh takes a few steps backwards, back towards the door. Tom walks in, camera at his back. He has a yellow leather, leather jacket on. As he moves towards it, becomes apparent that he wears nothing else. He's carrying two, <laughs> <laughs> two pint glasses full of vodka. There you go. Stolichnia, my favourite. Uh, right. Takes step backwards slowly, ends up against the door. I, I heard a clang. It's probably the locksmith. Need to rush. Uh, some other time. Darts out of the door, slams it shut behind him. Finds out that door leading out is locked and he only has a stump of a key. Curls up under the stairs to wait. Draws the hood over his head, tightens the strings. It's uh, slightly darker than most <laughs> Josh episodes. <laughs> <laughs> I'd watch it. I'd watch it. And uh, just to point out to any commissioners, the original script ends with Jeff being tricked into going into the flat, and Jeff, uh, the landlord, has a lovely time and gets to see uh, Freddie's uh, replica Brian May guitar. <laughs> what do you What do you think, Alice? Well, I think it's got an awful lot of potential. Mm -hmm. um, you know. I, I would say it's very, very pacey, very punchy. Uh, I think it's a superb uh, sense of dialogue. Um, I'll give it to BBC Top Brass, and I'll let you know, Ah, oh, fantastic. Mm. Fantastic. Uh, Dave, I may be unavailable for a couple of months <laughs> next year, but we'll sort out scheduling when the confirmation comes through. Uh, so, folks, there you go. Perhaps the first episode of... Uh, sitcom season two, Josh season two. season 2 it may even get get changed to John well to be <laughs> honest I mean I enjoyed that so much to me it smacks of Christmas special oh Christmas day I like Christmas it Christmas day of 9.30pm BBC One just after Noel's Christmas presents oh lovely Is that <laughs> John, I've got some big news for you. What? Well, uh, listeners uh, will remember, it was one of the last shows of 2015, uh, we read out a sample piece of script uh, for the Josh sitcom for Series 2 um, because there have been uh, lots of cameo appearances from friends of yours, friends of ours from the comedy Needeth circuit. Needeth ye remind I. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So All the great and good, the Venn diagram of you and Josh's friends who work for Radio X and are involved in stand-up. That's right. So All appeared on the uh, So obviously the there, there was a, a petition, somebody started a petition on change.org yes. uh, calling for John's introduction uh, into Series 2, which was announced uh, in December. We're filming Series 2 in uh, May, I think it is. But anyway, uh, we, we got some piece of script from Mika Kataya, um, and it was, it, was, it was great because it was very much written uh it's sort of it was very consistent in tone thematically it was just like something josh would write with tom but i got a very interesting text message this morning mm. so uh dear ellis john dave and vin it's from josh widdicombe himself john uh read it in his voice then um <laughs> no it's no. worth pointing out that john played two characters in our Sitcom yes, he did. He run. played himself as uh, sort of, uh, you know, playing himself in sort of as a cameo role, and also he played a Josh. dark, brooding presence. I think I brought to that role <laughs> precisely, <laughs> and he played Josh Widdicombe. Uh, and it was uh, check out the podcast because it's worth it. It's very, very funny. But anyway, dear Ellis, John, Dave, and Vin, I've had to text this to Ellis as I'm on holiday, and consequently, I'm not on email. Oh. Oh. Mm, tragic. Oof, oops. Where, where would you go on holiday where you can get... I mean, wh why would you do that? Anyway, I was delighted to hear the table read for a new episode of hit sitcom Josh and your show. Good. I thought, I thought the characterisation was excellent. Yes. And the plot moved with terrific pace. Promising. Most of all, I felt the character of Josh was played with a real panache. Was he meant to have a cold? He sounded very sexy. <laughs> <laughs> I also loved the incorporation of the band Queen into the plot. Mm. There are a lot of references to weak, forgotten and self-consciously naff bands in the past <laughs> Series one. Ooh, the that Queen totally sounds like 
<laughs> it's not as genuinely <laughs> positive as the previous. And <laughs> Queen totally fit the bill for that, so it was a great choice. To take this forward, we we <laughs> we would need to think about casting for the role of John. Do you have any suggestions? <laughs> I was initially thinking of bringing in for audition the following. Russell Howard, John Richardson, oh, Mark Oliver. Unavailable, Oliver, unavailable. Sarah, would, Sarah would, be, would do the warm-up. You can't have a girl playing it. Well, you can, it's the 90s. Uh, and Jamie, the landlord of the Hillgrove pub. Oh, he's not even met Jamie. Any any other thoughts? Also, after his excellent performance as Kate, would Vin be willing to read for the part of Owen in Series oh. 2? The actor who currently plays him has yet to agree a new contract due to his growing financial demands, <laughs> so we need to look for cover in case his agent continues to play hard. <laughs> Is that true? <laughs> oh, no, I just don't want to talk about it. <laughs> um, finally, I was disappointed that the episode ended with a reprise of the theme tune, as Ellis would know the credits of each show, a soundtrack with a song mentioned in the show or related to the show. Perhaps we could have had something by the band Queen. One oh. of the songs they played at their gig at South Africa Sun City, perhaps. <laughs> One of the... Thank you for your interest in the show. Cheers, wow. Josh, a co-writer of Josh. Oh. <laughs> so, how do you uh, feel about that, Josh? Well, fine. A, a humorous <laughs> aside. <laughs> Uh, we all know that he's just a puppet. Yeah. <laughs> for who? For the big wigs. NATO. For, no, for the big ones at BBC Three Online. Yeah. Who uh, are, I would say, pursuing a vendetta against me and Queen. Yeah, I think I think that's true. Well, Due to their jealousy that BBC Four got in early on the Queen train, and BBC Three are now sort of licking their wounds, saying, OK, we're not going to play Queen on BBC Three. Yeah. Well, leave it to BBC Four. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, yeah. Rags, to, rag, rags to Rhapsody I mean, over the Christmas period. <laughs> the legendary 1975 Hammersmith concert, which I watched both of. Yeah, you know, you've been caught in the crossfire, unfortunately. Collat yeah. Collateral damage. Someone's got to take bullets. Sadly, for your for your career, that's you know, you've really nailed your f sort of colours to the masters as if a Brian sort of May fan knew of self The Queen was still reaping the thorns of playing Sun City and not appearing in Josh as a result of that, I think he would probably rethink their decision to do it. Well, it's an interesting game to play, isn't it? What if? So, <laughs> all, all, all hijinks aside, uh, what do, would do you think that Josh is being serious, or is he being making a joke that because then he will then send you another text next year saying john could do it I, I i don't know i think i think it's quite a difficult email to read so when he comes back from his holiday i'll i'll see him in person i'll say listen he's willing to forget the whole queen stuff he's what he's willing to you know probably claim that he doesn't like the band no. no 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 i would i would appear on it as a frank zappa fan a captain beefup fan a sort of a cool shoreditch bonnie prince billy fan okay why running my own gastro plateless pub yeah yeah where where sort of food is served on a skateboard that sort of thing yeah 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 and queen don't come into it they're not even on the jukebox uh, well, what juke well, good luck finding a jukebox without queen on it <laughs> <laughs> they're part of the social tapestry of this country <laughs> this is an email from sam he says uh, i'm pleased to announce that as of 9 p.m today i'm a fully up-to-date retro one -er. Uh, for oh. those of you who don't download the podcast, that's someone who's been listening since the start because they've gone back through them from the start. Yes, yeah, so we might not have listened to the show when we first started broadcasting in 2014, but he's since caught up and listened to all of the podcasts. So, he goes on. <coughs> or she. Sam. Doesn't oh, make yeah? clear. Yeah. I now look forward to the release of the podcast each week, so I implore John, with the support from producer Dave and producer slash intern Vin, to keep a close eye on Ellis and make sure there is no sabotage afoot. I have noticed the inverse correlation between Ellis's screen time on BBC Three and the profile of the channel. As the more often he has appeared, from hashtag crimes to joshing, the channel has been on the slide, recently being demoted to online only. I would hate to see this Not trend... Not demotion, it's, it's, an it's an embracing of the future. Well, oh, is it? I would hate to see this trend continue and find out that Ellis has single-handedly caused the downfall of Radio X. Let's be honest, what is the next step down for a digital commercial radio station? <laughs> Presumably handing out poorly photocopied lists of your top five Gorkies and Queen songs at Waterloo Station. Yeah, sounds all right. Yeah, sounds good. Sounds quite good. I don't want to see that on my way to work. It would make me <laughs> sad. Love you, Sam. So, Ellis, what are you doing to ensure that your impact on BBC Three does not transfer to Radio X? Um, I am letting you take most of the links. <laughs> Uh, and just keeping my fingers crossed. Um, do you know what? Oh, God, is it my fault? 
Well, oh, I saw no. I saw David Schneider, the director of yeah. Joshing, sent a lovely team photo of the writer's room uh, yes. for the script for Josh. And many listeners pointed out um, that there was... There's no space for me there, so I can only imagine you're keeping it a surprise. Yeah. What my cameo is. We're going to rebrand BBC Three as basically a John Robbins based station. So yeah. it'd be like a sort of John Robbins in Ibiza with some young people. John Robbins meets yeah. the I mean, that, I mean, that, clan. Well, yeah, you, you obviously, you're being trying to be amusing. I'm being light hearted. Yeah, but yeah. in all seriousness. <laughs> in, what, all... in all seriousness. Uh, obviously, you're sort of now going to, to the tier two of uh, cameos in Josh, who are friends of ours and stand-up comedians. Yeah. So, what, I mean, what's been set aside for Robbins? All right, I don't have to say it, but you, you play someone who's in prison for fraud. I, great. Oh, God, I thought you'd be sad about that. No, I'm happy. Yeah, episode six, you are a credit card fraudster. Really? Yeah, but you choose it, you choose... It sounds like you're making this up off the top Vaseline. of your head, Ellis. No, it doesn't sound no. like this has been okayed no, by Schneider fine. and You uh, buy loads of Whittacombe. Vaseline. You've got the softest lips in any I'm a, I'm open a, prison in I'm Britain. a prisoner who buys loads of Vaseline. At first, you've got sure very of that sort of soft humor. lips. I mean, well, I have been suffering recently from dry hands, yeah. so I can probably draw on that. <laughs> Excellent. Okay, leave it with me. That was Blur with End of the Century, dear. Uh, their top hit about the millennium. So, listeners, some of you may be aware that Ellis is a superstar actor who has appeared in BBC drama Hashtag Crimes, uh, which was a sort of thought-provoking and un unflinching look at life in a young offenders institution. It's basically sort of um, scum, but updated for the uh, the youth market. Uh, My, yeah, minus the swearing. Yeah. Uh, and he is a, had just started filming for second season of sitcom Josh, in which Ellis is uh, best friend and, we could say, uh, benefactor. Uh, patron. Patron has uh, cast him as his housemate yet again. Now, the first season, there was an awful lot of sort of mock... Uh, jealousy from my part because I wasn't featured in a in a rotating uh, sort of uh, list of cameos from stand up comedians who Ellis and Josh are both friends with, but I dare say, oh, that's going to be put to bed when I finally find out what my part is in season two. I've only asked for a small part, and as of many of our podcast devotees do download the podcast, uh, so Ellis is drumroll please today the day where i find out what, what my part is yeah i mean what are your swordsmanship skills like uh mm, i would describe myself as theoretically a master swordsman but perhaps in practically pra practically i would say an advanced swordsman okay then that's great because there's spoiler alert there's an episode where josh and i have fencing lessons yes and we need someone to do some fencing but naked from the waist down so how do you how do you feel about that um am i allowed to wear a nude colored bodysuit no um uh, am i allowed to pixelate out my particulars uh two-thirds of your particulars yes <laughs> okay so i'm gonna lose the first two foot uh yeah i'm i'm willing to do that i'm willing to do that great okay i'll let the bbc know then thank you mate i mean obviously and then how do you feel about Sort of some slicing of your twig and berries. What physical slicing? Yeah. No. No. Okay. Well, oh be. God. Ha right. Have you seen the script for the whole series? Yes. Do I have a part? No. Radio X. Ellis James and John Robbins. Still rocking from the revelations that I have not received a cameo role in season two of Josh. Uh, I think. Well, there's already been a change.org petition. I don't know what <laughs> steps they can take now. The European Court of Human Rights? Yeah, apparently people have assembled on Downing Street. Well, I should hope so, uh, with with sort of accurate photos of me and then horrible sort of papier-mâché uh, sort of <laughs> uh, effigies of Josh. Yeah. And they're burning them and yeah. flying uh, a John flag, uh, designs for which are still open if you want to submit. Uh, anyway, coming up, we've got music from the uh, Red Hot Chili Peppers. <laughs> <laughs> the Red Hot Chili Peppers and Furls. Uh, we've also got textual healing where we will be solving the problems of a listener. Can I ask you a question? Go on, then. So, Ellis and I, yeah. sort of dynamic, works quite well. Because uh -huh. I'm sort of Johnny Big Potatoes in the world of our relationship. 
Yeah. But that's not actually reflected by our career trajectories. Oh, yeah. And I wondered how... Becoming increasingly aware, Ellis is involved in a lot of extracurricular activities. Is he? Doing very well. Are you getting worried he's straying? I mean, he's been well, popping up on TV. He's in quite a lot of sitcoms that he doesn't seem to have been able to wangle me parts in. Right. Even when those parts cried out for specific areas of knowledge that I have and oh. probably could have got inside the mind of. Yeah, yeah. So it's becoming increasingly clear that his mortgage is not necessarily being paid by... The balance Rob, by is Robin's shifting. Robin's work. Yeah. Is it magnanimous to ask your listeners to write a script of a sitcom that would feature you? So Ellis is in Josh, uh, the sitcom that Josh would have come. Oh, yeah. And I sort of suggested that it would be more than... I actually wrote an episode outline that included me. As oh, a, yeah. As a character obsessed by Queen who comes to move into the spare room. Yeah. That's not been... They haven't been in contact about that uh-huh. yet. But I'm sure it's in the pipeline. Yeah. But Ellis is in there. Oh, he's got his main part. Is he? Main part, yeah. And uh, also, the, the season, it's very funny, I don't know if you've seen it, but it features a it yet, no. sort of a revolving cameo fest of all our sort of friends in stand-up. Right, except you. Except me, notable, notable. Don't biases. let it get to you. Just sit back, play the long game. It, don't start thinking, well, this is bad and, like, making crazy... Don't stop killing people. I mean, oh, the worst. I, do that. I think you know. I'm. I'm able, I don't mind um, referring to, to these kinds of things now because I feel like they're in the past. And I remember me and Joe watching um, Pete and Dud. Uh, oh, not the what when they're doing Derek and Clyde. Yeah, that horrible scene where he's putting crisps in his hair. I mean, he's been so oh, horrible. It's to just him. the worst. And and he's just being vicious. And he and. We're supposed to think that he's being funny and Dudley Moore's kind of tolerating it because technically Dudley Moore is doing him a favour by being on the show because he's such a big star, he doesn't need to do it anymore and he's aware that Peter Cook... Peter Cook looks incredibly bitter, even though supposedly people that knew him say he really wasn't and yeah. he just was... He just did think he was being funny and he I didn't. I think that's how me and... That would be a similar dynamic to me and Ellis. Yeah. Because the, I, I know those recordings where... Especially the when Dudley, I think it was Dudley Moore's either mum or dad had cancer. Uh-huh. So a lot of the cancer ones are Peter Cook bullying him, but doing it in a sketch so he can't he can't come out of it. And the, the my favourite sketch of there's the ticket one mm. with his mum. Yeah, say a ticket. Ticket. Your yeah, ticket. That's great because Dudley wins that. He's funny and he takes over the bit and then Peter Cook at the end yeah. just shuts him down. And it's essentially because he's gone, no, you're not winning. Yeah, I yeah, will yeah. just make, the, I will put a full stop at the end of this sketch. So that's, it's sort of, it's, it's sad and to hear, but it's also, you can't sort of t- tear your ears I think away. the other thing is that, the, that you tend to read a lot of your own hang-ups into those kinds of things. And it, it might well be, you know, we don't know what the real dynamic between mm. those two was. And it might well be that they just knew each other's limits and um, they reveled in pushing each other as far as they could. I mean, it's hard to read it that way. When you look at Dudley Moore, I mean, it seems fairly clear that he is suffering and he's just like, this is awful and this isn't funny and this is uncomfortable. And Peter Cook's just like, I, I don't care. I'm just going to push you as far as I can. Mm. But who knows, you know? I guess what I'm saying is that I know because me and Joe are probably better than Peter Cook and Dudley Moore and I think very well respected in that way. And um, People look at our relationship and they think, what was really going on there? Do you think there'll ever legendary... be an Edinburgh Fringe show where two actors play you and Joe? Well, funny you should say that. No. <laughs> Take that, Nigel Farage. We're still playing it. That was Immigrant (laughs) Song by Led Zeppelin. You're listening to Radio X with I, Robbins, and he, Widdicombe. Yes, that's right, Josh Widdicombe sitting in for Ellis James. Now, regular listeners to the John Robbins and Ellis James show will know that Josh 
is a big figure in our lives. Uh, Ellis and I are mutual friends of Josh. Uh, we're all stand-up comedians. Um, yes. We're and Ellis, barely these days. Barely, really, Ellis, stand-up-wise. Uh, Ellis moving into acting. Yeah. In many ways. Slowly. Slowly but surely creeping into the hearts of uh, terrestrial television fans. He has appeared in... Uh, I, don't, I actually don't think he's actually got onto terrestrial. Has he not? I don't think BBC Three is terrestrial, is it? Oh, is it not? He's, okay, well, he's... digital. He's, he's a digital uh, firebrand. He is pushing the boundaries by involving himself in the new digital realm. Uh, Ellis obviously appeared in uh, Crimes, hashtag Crimes. Crimes, a very moving and gritty realistic drama set in a Young Offenders Institute where he played an old man disguised as <laughs> a 17-year-old small-time criminal. Uh, also, he's appeared in the smash hit sitcom Josh, Josh. Yes. You had a hand to play in that. I had a hand to play in that. <laughs> I anointed him. You anointed as my, him. Uh, as my flatmate. Uh, he uh, plays, yeah, he plays himself, really. Few other people anointed. Oh, yeah. Uh, I thought just, this might come up. Just a, just a quick uh, list. James yeah. Acaster. You, you do seem to have written a list in a book. Mike Wozniak. Yes. Tom Crane, who also wrote it. Yeah, well, you can't really say no to that, can you? Ramesh Ranganathan. Yeah, well, exactly. I mean, he's a big deal, mate. Lolly Adafopi. She's quite a big deal as well, mate. F Felicity Ward. Yes, she was in it as well. Celia Pecola. Yes, she was in it as well. It's uh, quite a long list, isn't Barry it? Barry and Paul Chuckle. Barry and Paul Chuckle, big deals. Um, Are you so saying we shouldn't have cast Barry and Paul no, Chuckle? No, I think they do almost as good a job as I would do as a Chuckle brother. Um... A lot of people there from the sort of Venn diagram of comedians, friends with Josh, really cool guys. Yeah. Is and, there anyone missing? Is that what you're saying? Uh, well, season two, can you yeah. announce any of the c stars? Yes. Who who might be in season two? Um, Henry Packer. Packer. Yeah, so he's a comedian and friend of me and Alice. Comedian and friend of you and Alice. Um, this has come up in the past, yes. hasn't it? I think Vin has prepared a little uh, smorgasbord. <laughs> Mr. Ellis James is appearing on a national sitcom this week. Yeah, written by my friend Josh Widdicombe, also John's friend. John's not in it, it's interesting. Six episodes, and I am Josh's flatmate, and I'm very, very excited. I laughed 11 times. <laughs> <I can't laughs> <tell. laughs> Which is just shy of the amount of times I usually laugh with 28 minutes of my own thought. I mean, that's amazing. I, as have the majority of the population, been follow following the, I think we can say, runaway success of sitcom Josh. Oh, thank you. I've been interested to see an awful lot of uh, cameos made by comedians, <laughs> our mutual friends of you and Josh, Mike Wozniak, Felicity Ward, yeah. Celia Pecola, uh, the wonderful Mr. James A. Caster. I, I don't remember getting an email during the filming process. Still rocking from the revelations that I have not received a cameo role in season two of Josh. There's already been a change.org petition. Apparently people have assembled on Downing Street. Well, I should hope so. Right, have you seen the script for the whole series? Yes. Do I have a part? No. Uh, it's astonishing to know that you carry that list around in your, in, in your wallet. I've had a tattoo designed. I saw it when we were in Cafe Nero earlier. I thought, what's that piece of paper behind your loyalty card? <laughs> <laughs> With the words James Acaster on it. Um, so, Josh. Yeah. Season two. Yes. That's in the can. That's in the can. Any any sure. thoughts about getting it out of the can? I, it's, it's, no, it's firmly in the can. can it, it's what, canned. What if well, it's the, not been canned. <laughs> <laughs> what if the can? What if the can fell off the shelf can and the got, can. got water damage, and you needed to reshoot an episode? And do you know what? I'm going to make your promise here. Right. Yeah. What has if, if there? You know, I'm, I am. I realise it's half one on a Saturday afternoon. We need I'm, tense music, Vin. I'm yeah. on it. I'm on it. Okay. So if, if for instance, um, it's, it's quite difficult. I forgot how difficult it is to fill. <laughs> <laughs> tense music, folks. For well, all I'm saying is producer Neil would have been tense music like that. Yeah. Oh, he was. He is. That's maybe why he made himself ill. Yeah. Right, now, 
if if we get a third season third series season. when Since the UK right. who's series who is in charge of that decision um well the BBC right yeah who at the BBC well, I know um, two people at the BBC Lord, well one doesn't really Lord speak to me at the BBC <laughs> <laughs> um if we get a third series then bare minimum yes you can have an Alfred Hitchcock style war <laughs> 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 Can we do celebratory music? Have we got celebratory music? Just put one vision on back to back with one vision. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> Ten minutes of applause. That sounds like you just played a lovely safety shot. Folks, you heard it here first. Robin's guaranteed a starring role in all six episodes of season three of Josh. Man this walking is, past the window. This is James Jack Bay. Now, finally... Um, in sort of uh, in a slight change in tone, uh, we've had an email from um, someone who remains anonymous about sweets. <laughs> <laughs> sweets. <laughs> no, uh, they say. Um, I've, I mean, this gives you an idea of the heft of this email that the two people talking about very personal emails gave their name. However, this person wishes to remain unknown. I've just had to pause my televisual viewing of the most recently aired episode of hit sitcom Josh oh, in order to why? email you after a scene where... Now, for those of you who don't know, uh, Josh is a sitcom um, written by a friend of mine starring all my friends and I have absolutely nothing to do with it, not even a credit. Not yeah. Well, I would, it would be odd if I did. Um, but there were three people we know on this week's episode. Henry Packer. Susie Ruffle. Oh, yeah, who's the and, other um, Miles Jupp, is that the word? Yeah, Miles Jupp, yeah. so three. You're casting the net ever further for mutual friends of yours to be in it. Fine. I'm just too big a fish to catch in your small net. <laughs> yeah. Uh, after the net would just go around one of your gills and it would actually hurt you. I know. <laughs> the, the reason they're not casting the net wider is because I would eat the net and pull on the net stick... <sighs> And devour everyone working in it. Back and to the email. Sorry. Yeah, so no wonder you're not on the show. That sounds horrible. Horrible man. Shut up. Horrible shut, man. Up, shut up. After a scene where Ellis's character berates Josh for having imperfections on his body, which is mean, Ellis, bullying, oh. uh, I was perplexed, nay, astonished, to see that Ellis appears to a topless, yeah. mm. nude, I'm nude scene. Four. And I'm not... Wearing a pair of grey shorts. Uh, well, your top half isn't wearing any grey shorts. It isn't, and uh, thankfully I hadn't developed my bunion at this point, so I was bare... I was in my bare feet, but... It's um, a tawdry sort of, you know, peep show kind of vibe, not the sitcom, the thing. <laughs> um, so, uh, he says, I was astonished to see that Ellis appears to have underarm nipples. What the flip is going on? What do you mean? Well, your nipple is under your arm. Yeah. Now, I've, he says, I've been, wrong with that. been long been an ambassador for increasing the number of Welsh people on screen. And whilst I admit he has a face and, dare say it, fashion sense for TV, Thanks. albeit 90s TV, yeah. he undoubtedly <laughs> has a, quote, nipple for radio. There is... <laughs> <laughs> Please dig a little deeper on this, John, like the file that his nipple clearly is. There is the truth must be out there. No one's ever mentioned that to me. Well, look at the picture. I've been, and I've been swimming. And it's, look at the picture there. Now, I have to say, I must concede that I am also a sufferer of the wide-set nipple. Um, what is it? It's because my chest is so broad because of the weight size. You're, in that photo as well, you're clearly tensing your arm. No. Yeah, you are. Of course I'm not tensing my arm. Tensing it's your like arm. take number 28 or something. I take number 28, Ellis, just pumping iron in between takes. No, I've just got to. You know, <laughs> yeah, I think yeah. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be able to do it this take. You've just got a hard, strong body, John. It's not my fault. I'm not tensing. We can't act and tense at the same time. Um, we've tweeted a picture of Ellis's nipple. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Sorry. Oh, you know, like, there's nothing wrong with my nipple. That there's nothing wrong with it. I suffer from the same it's thing. It's in the right spot. If you're Th then no. No, mine, no. They're too far left and right, Absolutely. respectively. Absolutely. <laughs> That's all it needs is the tattoo of Pint of Mild and Light under each one, like w Welshmen used to do in the 70s. If you suffer from um, middle age onset wide adult male nipple it condition... It doesn't middle age. I think the worst thing about my nipples is the circle of hair around them. But that's solvable. Yeah. I, th I think my nipples are... I'm going to say it, textbook. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely textbook. Well, if you have a way of solving uh, late onset adult male wild wi wild <laughs> wild <laughs> nipple syndrome, uh, do let us know. I'm thinking about just sort of taking maybe an inch of skin I'm from not the middle. Centre my nipples. <laughs> I want to get my nipples centred. You know, 
there's nothing. No, I absolutely dispute that my nipples are straight. Do you know what we should do for James, who's about to have surgery, who's a listener to the show? We should do a come on Ronnie, but come on James. Go on, James. Or see if we could test out a nipple straightening on him <laughs> to see if it works. What, as a volunteer? Yeah. All right, then. Well, James, get in contact if you want to have your nipples centred yeah. to John's odd specifications. <laughs> then I can see how it looks. Email the show. I will pay expenses. This is Cortina's with No One Will Ever Replace You. Or Me. us. 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 Yeah. Anyone. anyone. You can't replace anyone. <laughs> you raise a shop with a festival brain. A little place you like a hand grenade. Radio X. Ellis James and John Robbins. You listen to Ellis James and John Robbins on Radio X in the midst of a nipple aftermath. <laughs> <laughs> we've, we've tweeted a picture of my nipples, which are absolutely fine, as seen on uh, sitcom Josh, which was on uh, BBC One last night after Graham Norton. Topless uh, on national TV. Yes, right. Now, some of the texts we've and tweets we've had, it nipples are meant to be in line with your ears, uh, according to Helen. Is that Cohen. true? I don't know. Dave, um, if I... Um, if I indicate where my nipples are using pens, yeah. <laughs> okay. will, you te- will you tell me if they're broadly in line with my ears? I've yeah. heard of boss of eyed. Is Ellis boss nipples, says Lynn Crook. No, they're... Good grief, what happens to cause that, says Julie Taylor. So, if I select... That's worrying, says Ava Grace. If I select the nipples through the Queen hoodie... Okay, how do you know you're on your nipples? Because like, they, have, they have sensations, Dave. <laughs> They're not totally dead. I feel bad saying this, but I know what that guy meant regarding Ellis's nipples on last night's Josh. I'm sorry, from the uh, city of Mancunia. Ellis, we're conducting a laboratory test here. Are they below your ears? Yeah, they're... Dave, are they in line with my ears? Okay, so John has aligned his nipples with two pens poking directly upwards from the nipples. They are wider than they're your wide ears. Near it. Yeah, they are. Ellis! I'm getting absolutely destroyed look at on that. Twitter. Um, yeah, well, I personally, I think you look very nice. So sure, where should my nipples be? So this is what they would do at the operation. They would go like that <laughs> with pens. Oh, mate, I, yeah. need, I need an inch each side. I need no, two inches don't. each side. I mean, they should be there. Is that where they should be, Dave? Yeah, roughly. Ah! Yours are actually all right, Al. Thank you, yeah. Dave. Actually, yours are in line. John's are f- wider than they They're should very be. very wide And I've set. never noticed it. Whenever you've taken your top off in front of me, I've thought your, 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 your nipples are like something out of a catalogue. Yeah, a catalogue of bad off nipples. Off the peg nipples. <laughs> 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 very, very nice. Uh, right. Yours are a bit small. That would be my only... Point. I don't mind that. I'd rather have too small. As a man, rather have too small and too big. Mine are fairly big. Yeah, it's when they look like saucers. Mm. And you, that's, yeah, as a bloke, it's, 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 it's a very curious thing, that, when a man has nipples that are the size of a two-pound coin. <laughs> well, that's not that big, a two-pound okay, coin. I was trying to think of another bit. Uh, the only th- I couldn't a, think a commemorative five-pound <laughs> coin <laughs> brought out for the Queen's Jubilee. Yes. 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 Um, folks, right, uh, now, sorry, we've got music coming up from uh, Blossoms and Claxons. If you want to send in any photos of yourself carrying out the pen nipple width test, uh, do feel free to share. Uh, there's no shame on this show. Ellis James and John Robbins. Radio X. X. You are listening to Radio X, and folks, not only do we have our fingers on the pulse, we also have our fingers on the nipple. Male <laughs> consensual. Uh, because... Ow, I just hit my microphone in I'm excitement. Getting, I'm getting eviscerated on Twitter for my nipples. From Ewan Rutledge, can I feature on Judge Robbins due to horrifying psychological damage Ellis James and his horrendous nipples have now caused me? There's nothing horrendous about them, mate. Sorry, you're taking a bit of a hammering on the show today, Al. <laughs> yeah. A lot. Also, we should point out this is because your nipples were present on the Josh sitcom. And yes. And they look too far apart. Yeah, yeah. And is that available for people to check out on iPlayer? Yes, it is. Yeah. Lovely stuff. So... I mean, I, I, you know, I can't night. believe I'm saying this. I'm not sure they want to anymore, because <laughs> in case I get destroyed. Pick a pick an evening you've got free, a date night with your girlfriend, uh, maybe open a bottle of wine, <laughs> turn the central heating on, have a nice relaxing bath, light some essential oils. Don't light them, heat them. And then vomit when you <laughs> see my nipples. But uh, we've had... It turns out that Ellis is, based on one test, Ellis's nipples are in line with his ears, which means he's got normal nipples, whereas yes. mine are way outside. They're on the hard shoulder of this motorway. <laughs> um, but Ellis, we've had more news in. All right. That you're going to read out. Oh, yeah. 
All men's nipples are nine inches apart. Get your ruler out and give me a measure, says Mark in Tunbridge Wells, that it should come to this. That sounds like a lie, doesn't it? It does sound like a lie. OK, so we've managed to source the Radio X um, power lock uh, tape measure. I've been swimming. No one's ever told me off. Or yeah, but you, have, you wouldn't go up to someone in a swimming pool and go, all right, mate. Uh, might want to get those checked out by your GP. <laughs> and no one's going to tell you off for it. It's not like no running around the pool, you know. <laughs> I'm going to no ban you. No nipples. <laughs> so, get out! So I'm going to I'm going to measure. You measure your nipples first, from centre to from peak to peak. I think is the best way to do it. Yeah. So access the centre. You're quite small chested, aren't you? Thirty-eight. You're thirty-eight. Do you want to read it from John? Nine and a half. Nine and a half. So, a little bit above average. Ten, actually. Is it oh, ten? Oh, yeah. Oh. Let me check. Uh, I'm about a 42-inch chest, because I'm, I'm a fat. I bet you, <laughs> I bet you, Dave's nipples are as textbook as you can get. Um, Judged by the rest of his My nipples body. are wider than the Freddie Mercury in Helvetica that's on my T-shirt, which he wouldn't mind. Um, where are we? There we go. Hello, mate. Oh, about ten and three quarters. Ten and three quarters, you That's freak. an inch and three quarters. You're absolute. What a horror show. I need to remove uh, one inch and three quarter of distance from my nipples. Can you get this done on the NHS? I'd, I'd have to say it was having an impact on my mental health. <laughs> I haven't been able to go to a nipple contest in ten years. I, I'm proving a loss of earnings. I did actually what? have to wear nipple daisies on Mock the Week because I was worried that my nipples showed through my uh, T-shirt. That's a diff yeah, and then I suppose people could do the measurements from from the comfort of their own home. Yes. They can. On a big HD telly. Oh, Lord. Oh, come on, let's have a look at Dave's. I, no, I'm... it's all right. Let's leave it to you two. No, we'll do on. mine off air. All right. And then we can come back in a second. This all oh. sounds very tawdry. <laughs> um, but also, Josh... <laughs> We must mention the upcoming sitcom uh, series that is... It's not been written yet, has it? No, it's, so we've started. We've done two days on it. So it's still all to play for. It's still all to play for. Um, what do you start with? Do you start with the cameos, or do you start with... <laughs> no, we don't what? tend to start with the cameos. They're, so they're quite last minute, are they? They're, they're, you know, then halfway through, you'd look at what you've got and go, who'd be and, perfect for this? And what are you looking at? Comedy CV? <laughs> um, troll, troll reviews. Right, and so I'm guessing you're choosing the people with the worst aggregate reviews. <laughs> yes, yes. Right to to give them a to give them a leg up. Exactly. Interesting. Just like a Bernardo's for comedians with bad reviews at the Edinburgh Festival. What are you What are you planning for the next series of Josh? It's, it's very early stages. Cameo. You've got very six early months stages. to make a very to make a watertight case for yourself, John. What? It would. Do you know what? It was such a natural. Is, is often. <laughs> can I, it's such a Josh. Well, this has gone on long often enough. the cast would say, you know, push for their own choices, but mm. I've, I've not had. I've had, you know, Beatty's put people forward. So is Jack. What but sort of? Very rarely do I, I hear from other people. I put forward <laughs> Sylvester McCoy, but uh, what sort of names get th what Radagast? Yes. Uh, what sort of names get thrown around the the room when members of the cast are? Uh, suggesting cameos from perhaps their friends, colleagues, co-workers, peers. Chris Kamara. Superiors. Chris Kamara, maybe. So, talking more comedy world. Co comedy world. Um, well, I mean, I always like Buster Keaton and Hal Lloyd, yeah, but they've been, been dead, dead. Yeah. dead. Yeah, that, that you have pushed for them for the last two series. Yes. <laughs> Those Fallen emails have not been returned. Someone with a dynamic acting range. Yes. Someone with a playing age. From sad to shameful. <laughs> <laughs> You know, there, there's, a, there's names in the hat, let's put it that way. Perhaps someone with a dark underbelly. Yes. Someone who... Someone who's a fan of Queen. Dark chocolate with caramel inside. No, I don't like dark chocolate, okay. but I do like Queen. Mm. I do like caramel as well. Okay. So I would suck the caramel out, leaving the chocolate as a, as a sort of husk. Rufus Jones? No. <laughs> I think, I've widely agreed in writing that, that I think... Play the tense music, Dave. If they're filming... <laughs> I, I, don't, I don't have the power to do this. Obviously. You are? I, would, I, do, I don't have the actual power to do this. But you're, I, you're not an exec producer? No, I'm not an exec producer. You're not? I don't no. even know what an exec producer no, is. No, I mean, it's, very much, it's very much a title. Is yeah, it? They That's what they checks. said when I tried to get moved to it, anyway. <laughs> <laughs> um, I would t happily, I've agreed that were there to be a third series, I've already said this on the station. We're recording this, right, Dave? 
Yeah. Verbal the, the, contract. The, the, a, a character with between zero and one lines. Yes, please. <laughs> It will, Easy to learn. Will, well, it take, will be available for take, you, John. What, say that again. I, 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 I say, I put your hand on that pret bag and swear. <laughs> I'm not going to swear on the pret bag. It's <laughs> <laughs> not an idiot. I'd happily, in exchange for the, you know, the amount that I feel you and Alice would need to talk about the experience week after week, you know, agree to you having a, a role with zero to one lines in it. You heard it there <laughs> first, folks. Now, we're taking stock. We don't know whether Josh was talking in binary there, where he's talking about how many lines I have. Obviously, it depends how many zeros and ones there are as to how many lines I have. But between zero and one, which in binary could be infinite... I need to talk to the producer, but yes. Could, have you got... Infinite lines in a <laughs> Oh, I'm going to start working on draft line. <laughs> You don't choose your own line. No, that's not how it works. Uh, I'm very much an improviser in the sort of, <laughs> in the Ken Loach style, Josh. So awful lot of riffing. Very okay. gritty. There, thank you so much. Thank you for having me. To Josh for joining us there. Buy his DVD. Download his futuristic show file from the uh, web and watch Josh season three when it comes out. And you can also get access uh, to the first two seasons through the iPlayer, which is like a DVD that happens live on your screen. <laughs> How are you doing, mate? Really good. Um, we're filming uh, the third series of Josh at the moment. Never I, heard of it. Okay, well, that's fine. But I am going 0.0% session. Whoa! 0% session for the star of TV's Josh. Yeah, yes. Uh, <clears throat> TV's Rogan Josh. TV's Rogan Josh. Who are the to getting the cameos this year? Um, uh, well, I mean, your mum's doing it as well. <laughs> your, your ex-girlfriend, that was a tricky oh. one. But Is she really? No, no, she's not. It's fine, it's fine. <laughs> Chill out. <laughs> fine, fine. Wish her all the best. Yeah, but... No, I'm keeping it 100 percent I went out for a friend's birthday, um, and we went out for a curry, uh, and I, I didn't drink. Although last night I did crack, and I sniffed Dizzy's Grolsch. My friend Robin, towards he's had two months off booze, and towards, he? towards the end we went out in London, and he wasn't drinking, and there was a lot of pint sniffing going on. Yeah, it's almost, it's almost the same in a way. <laughs> it's sort of the same. It look, you look a bit weird sniffing people's pints. Yeah, and it's an odd thing to request. Do you mind if I have a quick sniff of your pint, mate? Yeah, there is, I, I just smelt, smelt the stem of the bottle. And uh, for about 10 minutes, and then it was fine. Uh, I've also gone 0.0% session with biscuits. I've got right. a non biscuit. I've got a non biscuit biscuit policy for the next seven weeks. Why? Because it's I it's a pointless middle aged goal. It's not because I put set on yourself when your life is dull. <laughs> <laughs> All right, you've got an interesting life and you cry about I'm it and I don't eat biscuits I'm and not, I'm happy. You have a very interesting life. Uh, you get to star in all the top sitcoms. However, we have discussed in the past... The people get to a certain age yeah. when maybe there's less stimulation in their life, so they set themselves pointless tasks. No, it's because... I'm not going to eat oranges for the next seven for, Wednesdays. For, le <laughs> for Lent. No, it's because on the last series I put on half a stone in the first five days because when there are bourbons on set, I can't turn them down, Josh. John. <laughs> no, God. How dare you. <laughs> um, mate, I hope, I, hope, uh, I hope it all goes well and you manage to eat no biscuits and have no booze and have a great life. It's going to be fine. Think how healthy and great I'm going to be at the end of seven weeks. How long have you got left of it? Six weeks. Wow, we're going to have such different six <laughs> weeks. Yeah, what, you, what have you got planned then? Edinburgh. It's drinking, but uh, only up to four and a half percent. Okay. The odd biscuit, because I don't really have a sweet tooth anyway. Oh, but I've got a sweet tooth. It's... Ellis, I am not going to have balsamic vinegar until 2019. Oh, best of luck. Yes, and I'm going to walk in a circle twice a day <laughs> for half an hour. Well, that'll be good for your quads. <laughs> I sort of do it in the living room anyway. Do you? You don't pace in your living room. Yeah, I've got a pace, mate, with the shoes off to avoid wear and tear on, on the carpet. Own? Resale value. On your own? Yes, Get my steps up. And what do you think about? You. <laughs> <laughs> Big week for me, though. Uh, why? Uh, I filmed a shower scene on Tuesday. Well, for which I've seen the remarkable stills. Yeah, yeah, Josh would have come sent you the stills. But, uh, yeah, shower scene. And, um... 
I'd never done anything nude. I mean, I'd been nude. <laughs> <laughs> Born in a three-piece suit. <laughs> you know, I, I had been nude before. You, yeah, you've been nude in your I've, life a I've couple of times. I've been nude a couple of times, yeah. Um, obviously only in front of two people um, uh, since it all dropped. Uh, uh, Izzy, my girlfriend, and the doctor. And your mum. And that my time mum. she walked in your living room. Yeah, house. yes, yes. All right, all right then. All right then. <laughs> 2014, but we've all moved on from that. <laughs> It was, a, it was pre-Brexit, it was a very different time. You cupped yourself. <laughs> no, no, I didn't, that was the thing. I, I didn't cut myself because I'd, I wanted to prove that I was cool with my nudity. Wow. So I sort of, oh, no, hey, anyway. <laughs> uh, yeah, um, so I had, to do a, um, I had to do a shower scene. Uh, David Schneider, um, the director, thinks that the soap in my bum is the funnier it is. So I had to, so I had to soap up before uh, every take, which was a lot of fun. I got given a flesh-coloured pouch, which filled with warm water. Well, that must be quite nice. Uh, it is, yeah, but Simon... A foot spa. Yeah, but Simon the producer, um, because it filled with so much warm water, he said it looked like I was churning mozzarella in there. <laughs> so, so uh, as a man who's never filmed uh, a nude scene for public viewing, <laughs> um, or for private, or ever, of course, Come on, uh, yeah. the odd amusing photo to our WhatsApp group of trusted friends, <laughs> um, but... So you're, you're fully nude. Fully nude. So it's the... But how is the process of... So... When you are going from... So, start me off. You've got all your clothes on. How does it work? Yeah, so we rehearsed with me in a dressing gown. Yeah. Um, uh, by which point, the pouch had already been gaffer taped to my body. Yeah. Um, so, we rehearsed in a dressing gown. And then they said, are you ready to shoot one? And I said, let's go for it. And uh, Sounds like my love life. What's that mean? <laughs> Carry on. <laughs> <laughs> off came the dressing gown. Um, yeah, and we, we did one, and then they realised there was something wrong with the framing, so we had to do another one, um, at which point um, um, Abby in makeup was like, would you like your dressing gown back? I was like, we've all seen it now. So I just stood there, hands on hips. So you stood bum there, out. bum and pouch. Yeah, well, I was facing. It was filming me in the shower, so my really intimate area was facing the wall. Yeah, but that's where um, the, the sound guys were. Because so. I always assume, in a sort of slightly tawdry, teenage way, that when um, someone does a, a nude scene, yeah, sort of the 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 the, the crew get the sort of best bits. Oh yeah, yeah. The, but well, that, but no one actually. I had to soap myself before every take. The problem was the um, flannel was in a bucket, and obviously I kept bending down to get the flannel. Oh, God. But yeah, I mean, I mean, Amy in sound saw some. It was amazing. She was just her eyes were fixed on the ceiling because I, you oddly, you forget that you're naked after a couple of minutes. But yes, uh, tell I you what, I, and uh, I get picked up at six a.m. and um, in the shower before I got picked up, I, re I remember that episode of Naked, Naked Attraction I'd seen where everyone was trimmed, and I'm, I'm not a trim guy, so uh, I get picked up at six. At six or six, I was trimming my intimate area for the first time <laughs> in the kitchen, practically in tears with the taxi really? peeping it on. Yeah, kitchen scissors. It was sure. an, <laughs> <laughs> done in an absolute but surely panic. the pouch. Yeah, but, you know, I, I wasn't sure how big the pouch should be and all that. Have you ever trimmed your... Intimates with kitchen scissors? Not with kitchen scissors. Okay. He's a, a lawnmower. <laughs> <laughs> this is Wall of Glass by Liam Gallagher. You're listening to Radio X. I am John Robbins. And to my left, a man so frustrated by laws restricting public displays of nudity that he will only sign a TV contract if it guarantees one nude scene of at least 20 seconds back or 10 seconds front, depending on which is more in keeping with the narrative. Mr Ellis James. Good afternoon, John. How are you? I'm good, man. I would like to be sent less screenshots of your bum. If, oh, has that been poss. happening? Has that been happening? Yeah. By whom, then? Who's been... Uh, is, uh, not me, I should... I hasten to add. No, by um, viewers of um, top-shelf sitcom Josh. Yeah. Um, the w w the, the uh, sitcom Channel 5 are most annoyed to have missed out oh, on. Oh, come on. Because of its uh, regular scenes of nudity. It's because it's just a body at the end of the day. It is a body. It's just, it's just, it's just, you know, skin, bones, and flesh. are rumours true that you are to be the next host of uh, Channel 4's Naked Attraction? Yes, yes, that is true. But I'm going to be doing it naked. Yes, it, you'll be so used to my naked form by the end of the by the end of the first series with me at the helm. And are rumours true that you're bringing back Keith Chegwin's short-lived <laughs> nude? 
What was that thing? He was a, he was in a jungle and he was doing like crypto factor stuff, but in in the buff, wasn't yes, he? Yes, apparently he had very small figures. <laughs> oh, John! Oh, it was quite quite eye opening. Yeah, but just I'm just bones in a bag of skin at the end of the day. I'm fine with it. Yeah, yeah, you know, you fine with my body, John? Fine as long as it's covered in uh, Lacoste polo shirts oh. and uh, corduroys. Yeah, all right. <laughs> um, Do you get paid more for being nude? No. No, I really? was taken aside about a month before we filmed it, and they said, are you happy with being nude? And I went, oh, come on. Of course I am. No, I had a long think, because I wasn't sure. You know, I'm out. It's out there now. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'm, my, my, form is, my, 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 my form is out there. Luckily, they uh, pixelated out your long think. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, they did. How are you, John? I'm good. I Did we keep... do a nude scene? Um, yes, I, well, I, I practice, <laughs> practice nude scenes at home. Around the house? Yeah, just Were different you... scenes from famous films. Yeah. <laughs> but not necessarily sort of naked ones. You talking to me? <laughs> you talking to him? Uh, that's one of the ones I do in front of the mirror. E. With a concealed home. firearm. <laughs> um, what's in the box? Oh, I'll put it back in the box, that kind of thing. You see dead people? Well, that doesn't make sense, does it? As in the one from the Sixth Sense. Yeah, yeah, but he's not naked. He's a kid, isn't it? Yeah, oh. so, but it doesn't make. But that's not even what you. Oh right, he's passing me a bit of paper due to problems with our system. Andy has emailed in uh, addressing his email to John and Mark. Um, yeah, I read that. <laughs> um, yeah, did. I mean, he makes it to be a big fan of the show, but not know my name. It's an, it makes some interesting points. Um, uh, <laughs> Mark, when is season three of Josh due? <laughs> Well, it was due in 2016, and we delivered it then. Oh, right. Yeah. <laughs> Big Andy fan, alone. Mark. Mark was in Josh two years ago, mate. Yeah. <laughs> oh, lovely Thanks, stuff. Mark. Thanks. No, he's Andy. Andy. Um, I, oh, I'm Mark, of course. I feel, it's, it's easy to forget. Uh, thanks, Ali, for uh, the poem she's written. Uh, Ali is the devoted wife of a PCD. Does Ali think I'm called Carl? No, <laughs> she spells your name correctly. Oh, great. Uh, secondly, Harry, um, so you know I wrote an article for Vinyl Me Please about the ten best, ten albums, Queen albums you should own. Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, Harry has emailed in and he says, um, I feel that like I must correct a slight error on an article you wrote for Vinyl Me Please on Queen. And I'm reading this thinking, yeah, I know which one it is. And actually, it's your fault, mate, because you haven't seen the comma before I uh, I name um, the song. It's, I'm not actually I'm, I'm actually talking about two separate songs, because a few people have pointed out that mistake, but it's not a mistake. Okay. However... Because you've never made a mistake. He you? then goes on to say, in the hot space write-up, and I'm thinking, yeah, this is where everyone always gets, but they've not mentioned the comma, so it's not... He says, um, he says you state the following... Then there's this really oddly placed ballad called Las Palabras de Amor with a guy called Zuccaro. And I'm thinking, yeah, Harry goes on. While Zuccaro did perform this song with the surviving members of Queen at the Freddie Mercury tribute concert, he had nothing to do with the track itself as released in 1982. Oh. And as for not having heard of him before, do you not remember his one hit song with Paul Young called Senso Una Donna? If not, you're missing out. And it was an actual mistake. And I immediately emailed the owner of Vinyl Me Please and said, I know it's six weeks since I read that article, but a mistake's just been pointed out, and can you please change it? Suddenly, everything has changed. Why is that? Well, all of the things I thought about you are now wrong. Yes. You're someone who makes queen mistakes. I know. Well, Harry goes on. That, that, do you know, this reading this email out is very bad for your brand. Well, ha, well, get this. And Robbins has been destroyed. Think you're a bit of a... Think you're an accent merchant? Think you do a good accent? Oh, gosh, yeah. Harry goes on in his litany of <laughs> mistakes we've made. Which I like, Harry. Ellis, I think you're a gifted mimic of accents, but that cork accent on the episode of Josh left a lot to be desired. Right, ah, uh, ah, uh, ah. Uh, Don't uh, get me uh, wrong. Uh, uh, uh. It was a... Ah, let me finish. Ah, 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 <laughs> Don't get me wrong. I know what he's going to say. It was a quote, decent generic Irish accent. It just sounded <sighs> closer to Dublin than Cork. We had this debate for a long time. I knew it was a Dublin accent because my Cork accent sounded ridiculous. Well, a, a true deep Cork accent is quite hard to make out. Yeah. As anyone who's watched and the YouTube video, the high, highest pub in Ireland Josh's would attest to. note for that was... I want you to sound like 
um, Jarlath Regan, you know, the comedian who does the podcast. Oh, yes, I do. Uh, and got I, and such I, a soft, yeah. He's got a beautiful yeah, voice. Beautiful, voice. beautiful soft voice. I, uh, is his podcast called An Irishman Abroad? I think where he interviews Irishmen who don't live in Irish people who don't live in Ireland. Uh, so, yes, but the script had been written, and I think. I can't remember why. Because the cat car the, the, yeah. <laughs> the, the terrible <laughs> great crack all the day and come to dawn. There was get, some get reason paint. we couldn't change it to say, for, for people to think I was from Dublin, and it had to be Cork for some reason. I can't remember why, but... Oh ah, my, but you go from the Cork, I you know that my fair so day will go down there on the weekend. Tweets, and I knew it was Dublin, but it was out of my hands. If you want to blame anyone, blame Simon Mayhew, Archer, the producer, Josh Widdicombe, and Tom Crane, the writers, and David Schneider, the director, because wow, my complaint shifting a lot of blame there, mate. deaf ears. Because I knew it wasn't a Cork accent. But also, I think one of the things was, Owen, the character, didn't know anything and so he could do this generic Irish accent, which he assumed. And so when she said, where are you from? He just went cork because he was referring because he doesn't know because he doesn't live there. Okay. Which becomes apparent during the course of the episode where... So we're talking fictions within fictions. Yeah, where he's asked lots of questions about his, his native cork and he can answer them and the whole thing unravels. I think that was the point. Josh well was, I can't well remember. done, Harry, for touching two nerves there. 